we starting, Maha? No, Khan, what's up? We're recording. All right. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah, Barakatha. Your brother, Shalak from Yahweh's camp. And I'm here with some of my brothers. And we got another little, little lesson to get into. Uh, the title of, of this lesson that I got is pretty much proving that America is Babylon or saying that Babylon is America. You feel me? Yo, Yashwan, are you able to read or not? Khan. Okay, Khan. I'm also going to grab precepts too. So, yeah, you know, as always, we're just trying to keep waking our people up, the so called Blacks, Hispanics, and Natives, who are the 12 tribes of Israel. And we're just trying to keep elevating their mind, letting them know that they got to come back to their God, whose real name is Yahweh, and that we also got to be Christ like, whose real name is Yahweh Shai, but the world ignorantly calls Jesus. And one of the things I want to touch on is just showing to our people, so-called Black Hispanics and Natives, that America is a facade, a country that people come to, you know, foreigners, they come over here, specifically like within the Northern Kingdom, they come over here thinking that this place is a grandiose empire when it's really nothing but debaucherous, wicked, evil, heinous acts, you feel me? So one of the things I'm going to get into is just proving that America is Babylon. Los Estados Unidos es Babilonia. Cuando ustedes se meten las profecías de Babilonia, está hablando de los Estados Unidos. Y yo voy a usar la Biblia para comprobar que los Estados Unidos es Babilonia. So, um, if, uh, Yashua, if you could grab me Proverbs 11 and 4, Baba Kasha. And... I'm gonna go ahead and I got, I'm gonna grab Proverbs 29 and 16. So what happens is that our people have been duped into this illusion of what America is, you feel me? Our people have been sitting here enslaved for too long. They got freed supposedly. And then what's up happening now is that because we're freed, we have this illusion that this country you know, did something for us and that this country is also a, uh, you know, a, a great place when it's not. So I want to start off with uh, reading. You got that in Proverbs? Uh, you said 11 and 4? Uh, 11 and 14, Baba Kasha. Uh, 11 and 14. This Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, it says, where no counsel is, the people fall, but yeah, in the multitude, it says where no counsel is, the people fall. So where there's no counsel, counsel is guidance, you feel me? Government, pretty much, uh, a guideline. So when there's no counsel, the people fall. Hence why in America, you see nothing but chaos, read. Uh, it says, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Mm-hmm. So within the counselor, when, you know, you actually do the things that you're supposed to by following these laws, statutes, and commandments, there's safety for us. As so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Natives, we actually have safety. We have a hedge of protection under Yahweh. But when you go under Esau, under America, under the illusion of freedom and liberty, you don't have that. It's chaos. And I'm going to grab real quick Proverbs 29 and 16. And it says, when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. And that's what we see right here. In America, the wicked rule. Esau runs this, you know, this corporation. Then that's what America is. It's not a country. It's a corporation. And you see that they are very wicked. They run this world. They run the, the world as well, outside of this world, which we know as America. And they allow everything that you can think of. You know, they start off by saying you have the liberty to, what is it, freedom of uh, choosing to celebrate your God or whatever. So that means in my land, in this land, right, me being a Hebrew Israelite, I worship Yahweh, but then I got two Moabites next to me in Ammonites, and they get to worship Moab, uh, you know, Buddha, 
Hindu Indians get to worship Krishna and Shiva. So you have all these ideas of people that are allowed to worship their God, right? But all it does is bring more madness and confusion. So how do you, being a Hebrew or someone who's trying to follow the word of Yahweh, you feel me? How can you be around that environment? And that's the wickedness of America. And it says that transgression increases. So like it, transgression increases. So you see that transgression has multiplied at a numerous amount in today's times. You have homos, you have, you know, people committing all types of uh, debaucherous acts, rape, pedophilia, that is a, at an all time high. And you, you see all these celebrities now getting exposed because of what? Because transgression has increased. Um, I'm gonna grab real quick Job 10 and 22. And if uh, Yashwan, if you could grab me, um, Jeremiah 49 and 7, Baba Kasha. So Proverbs 20, uh, Job, my fault, Job 10 and 22, it says, a land of darkness as darkness itself and of the shadow of death without any order and where the light is as darkness. And that's what this land is. There's no order, it's dark. Now, are you gonna say it's a physical darkness? No, it's a spiritual darkness. Our people don't see the light. Our people only see the facade. Our people only see these celebrities who they idolize as, you feel me? Um, and of the shadow of death without any order and where the light is as darkness. So even when there is a light that Esau tries to cast as light, it's still darkness at the end of the day. You may be a talented artist, but in order for you to get to that position where he shows you light, you have to still be in darkness because now you have to sell your soul. And what's that? Selling your morales, you know, just throwing your morality out the window and then shunning your people away as well. So screw your people, but you're cool with yourself. You're in straight up darkness. And I'm going to read it again. It says a land of darkness as darkness itself. What land is more darker than America? When you think about the history of it, when you think about the wars, the bloodshed, the, uh, the enslavement, the torture, castration, binding, raping. What land is more darker than this place? There's no other land out here that could say, hey, we equate to the wickedness of America. America has literally grabbed all the world's wickedness and said, watch what we do. And they've multiplied it to an extreme extent. Um, you got that in Jeremiah? Jeremiah 49. What? Yeah. You said 49, and what was that? 49 and 7. And uh, I'm going to read down to 14. Con <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 7. Concerning Edom, thus saith the Lord of hosts, is mm -hmm. wisdom no more into mine? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Right. Is their wisdom vanished? Mm -hmm. Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of the dying, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him, the time that I will visit him. Yeah, so, great God do so like it. Esau is going to reap what he sowed. You feel me? Esau is going to, he's going to get what he owed. And what he's owed is destruction because that's what he's brought upon this earth. Using this country known as America with three Ks, he's done nothing but rape, rob, and destroy the earth itself. Go ahead and read on, Ox. Verse 9. If great gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some glittering grapes? If these mm -hmm. by night, they would destroy till they have enough. But I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places. And he shall not be able to hide himself. 
his seed is spoiled and his brethren and his neighbors and he is not leave thy fatherless children i will preserve them alive and thy widows trust in me for thus saith the lord behold they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have a surely drunken mm -hmm. and art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished thou shalt not go unpunished but thou shalt surely drink of it what did the Lord say? For I, he said, but thou shalt surely drink of it. Mm -hmm. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, and a curse. And all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. I have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent unto the heathen saying gather ye together and come against her and rise up to the battle so yeah that right there is going into what's going to come because of esau's wickedness because of america perpetuating all these uh ideologies and philosophies on other countries everybody outside of america as in the world powers they're sick of this place so they're gonna that's why you have you know the bricks form and that's why you have all these countries coming together in alliance to take down the whore known as babylon these people are sick of this place even esau is tired of esau and that shows the madness and wickedness of america america will go and bomb your country simply due to the fact that you won't accept some of their laws uh if they don't bomb you they'll go and start doing um sanctions They'll start getting rid of your resources. They'll start blocking things off, cutting your water off. That is what America does. So these countries that are out here, they're sick of this place. And on top of that, who's mostly sick of this place is the Most High Yahweh. You know, this place has done nothing but once again, destroyed the world, destroyed the children of Israel, most importantly, and then led us astray by giving us this freedom and liberty, giving us these illusions. I'm going to read real quick uh, Jeremiah 16 and 15. And if you could grab me uh, Jeremiah 23 and 8, Babka Shah. Uh, hey, Salaki, hey, that's powerful too. And that Jeremiah 49, that same exact Khan. account is in uh, the book of Obadiah. Khan, Khan. This is uh, Jeremiah 16 and 15. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he has driven them and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. The land of the north, you see that? Now, what country, what place holds dearly to that title? The land of the north. North America, the United States of America. It's, it's you don't see, is that talking about North Korea? No, it's not talking about North Korea. It's not talking about North Africa. Those places exist, but what is this talking about? And it says that Yahweh was going to save the children of Israel out of the land of the north. And then I'm gonna grab another one. Uh, you got that in 23 and 8, right? Uh, what was that last one? Uh, the one that I just read was Jeremiah 16, 15. But the um, one I call for you, 23 and 8. Uh, it says, but the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out mm -hmm. of the north country. Right. And from all countries where I have driven them. And they shall dwell in their own land. And now I'm going to grab Jeremiah 3 and 18, and it says, In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto their fathers. It's reiterating the same thing that we've read in Jeremiah 16 and 23. And notice how it keeps saying Judah and Israel, the children of Israel. They are what? In captivity together. It says, 
In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land. What is that togetherness? It's us unifying in our captivity, us understanding that we are not supposed to be here, and us also recognizing that we have a common enemy. Your enemy, so-called black man, is not the Hispanic man. So-called Hispanic man, your enemy is not the native. So-called native man, your enemy is not a Hispanic or a black man. This is the things that we have to understand. And with all the stuff that's been going on, you now start seeing the unification of black and brown people. You feel me? So let me grab uh, Revelations 11 and 8. And if you could grab me 16 and 6, Babakasha. Because this land that we know as North America, United States, even in Canada too, right? Canada is another wicked country. You had all the Gadites living up there. And where are they? Same thing that happened here in the United States. So the North Americas, South Americas essentially has been land that it's just been lands that were once, you know, belonging to a people who no longer have control over their own lands. Because even in the South Americas, who's running the, the lands within the government, the politics is not the Northern Kingdom. It's not Issachar, it's not Zebulun, it's not Asher, Naphtali, Simeon, Ephraim, no. It's typically Esau or others. If it is one of ours, they've done what? They've sold their souls and their morality and their guides to you know, be in that protection of Esau to get the money. So they sold themselves for riches. But the people that are the average Joes working there, they're suffering. So understand that within this whole side, the Western Hemisphere, you have the majority of the children of Israel in captivity. So I'm going to go ahead and read that in uh, Revelations 11 and 8 real quick. And it says, Revelations 11 and 8, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified. Now, how do we know that America is this place being referred to as Sodom and Egypt? Simple, look at the behavior, look at the things that America promotes and how it holds itself. And we're gonna prove it once again, using the scriptures. Um, if you could grab me, well, you're still holding that Revelation 16 and six, right? Khan, y'all got it. Khan, go ahead and read that real quick. It says, for they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets, mm -hmm. and thou hast given them blood to drink, you for see that? they are so, worthy. So, so America, this place has shed the blood. This place that's being referred to as Sodom and Egypt, has shed the blood of the saints. Who are the saints? The children of Israel, so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Natives. But let's go now to another precept to show that America is being, you know, uh, represented as Egypt and Sodom by its uh, by its behavior, by the things that you know its makeup pretty much is. Because America isn't a beautiful country. It's not. Its makeup, its origin, is straight death, destruction, and madness. Um, this is Exodus 20 and 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Bondage. Revelations 11 and 8 says in this land, right, it's going to be known as Sodom and Egypt. Spiritually, because Sodom and Egypt, well, Egypt is still around, but Sodom is no longer around. It got burnt. But its spiritual aspect is being referred to in this land. Now, why is it saying Egypt? Because Egypt represents bondage, captivity for the children of Israel. When you look at your dollar bill, all you gotta do is turn it around. There's a pyramid there. Why do white American men have an Egyptian pyramid on their money, on the dollar bill specifically, when they have nothing to do with each other? If you look at it from that lens. But if you look at it through the spiritual lens, you understand that this is them telling you who they are. Babylon, you feel me? 
they're telling you, yes, we have the children of Israel in bondage. Now, uh, I'm going to grab real quick Zephaniah 3 and 20. Just to show that this is our captivity. This place that we know as America is not our, you know, uh, freedom, liberty, where we're just here to be peaceful, loving, everybody get along. No, to this day, so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Natives are getting gunned down, killed, marginalized, scrutinized. We're still being thrown in, uh, in prisons. You know, our hoods are still trash. Nobody's helping us. So that's how you know that this place does not care about us. This is uh, Zephaniah 3 and 20. At that time, will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you? For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. And when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. So that's just a quick little side point just to show that bondage, captivity, us being here in America, it's all synonymous. There's nothing... There's no difference between slavery, bondage, captivity. It all means the same thing. So now let me grab uh, Genesis. And if you could grab me, Ak, real quick. Romans 1 and 25 through 27, Baba Kasha. So in Genesis, I'm going to read Genesis 19, 1 through 5. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, enter your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet. And ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round about both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them so that when you see that in the in the King James Version says that we may know them, that right there is talking about sex, intercourse. These men wanted to have intercourse with angels, right? If you read it in, that's in the KJV. If you read it in the NLT, verse 5 says, they shouted to Lot, where are the men who came to spend the night with you? Bring them out so we can have sex with them. So that's what Sodom is. It's a place, and when you look up the word in the Merriam-Webster, the word Sodom, what it means is um, pretty much uh, a lustful desires and whatnot. Let me grab it for you real quick. Here we go. Sodom definition in the Merriam-Webster. And this is, once again, just to prove to our people, so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Natives, that America is a place full of corruption and it is not your rest um here we go sodom a place notorious for vice or corruption keep that in mind vice or corruption la palabra sodom significa un lugar para vicios y corrupción entiende eso okay guarda eso en la mente los estados unidos es que un lugar de vicio y corrupción y eso porque en Revelación o Apocalipsis 11 y 8 dice que este lugar va a ser llamado Sodón y Egipto. You got that in uh, Romans? Uh, 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 you want uh, 124? Uh, start at 25. Uh, and it says, who changed the truth of God into a lie. And mm -hmm. worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Mm -hmm. Who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. Unto vile for affection. even their woman. For even their woman did change the natural use 
into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burn in their lust one toward another. They burn in their lust one towards another. What was the definition of Sodom? A place notorious for vice or corruption. Now that's a vice, burning in your lust. Men with men, women with women, men becoming women, women becoming men. All this is corruption and vice. So these are little key markers, you know. Estos son los señas y detalles enseñando y los puntos que tú puedes agarrar para dis distinguir que los Estados Unidos es Babilonia en acuerdo de las escrituras. Now, I'm going to read um, 2 Peter 2 and 18 real quick for y'all. And it says, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured through the lust of the flesh. Through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. So that's what America does. Great swelling words of vanity. They tell you, you, you have the liberty to do whatever you want. You, could, you can be a sodomite. You can worship whatever God you want. You could be whoever you are. According to them, but at the same time, it's, it's a hypocritical system because you can't say, well, I want to be a murderer and run around, start murdering people. They're going to throw you in jail. But they tell you, you could be whoever you are. So that right there is just showing the hypocrisy of this land known as America. And then what does it say again? It says, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. This place may promise liberty. This place may promise freedom. But at the end of the day, the leaders who are giving you this liberty and freedom are corrupt themselves. You don't think all them politicians are up there dealing with type uh, all types of pedestrian, all types of bestiality, human trafficking, uh, drugs, murder. These C hell, just look into the CIA. The CIA itself is one of the most wicked, evil organizations across the face of the earth. They go and do whatever they want. They'll kidnap you, torture you, extract the information that they need, and then they'll kill you, go to your family's house, burn your whole house down, kill your family, rape your daughter while they're at it. The CIA is just wicked. And who does the CIA work for? The United States of America, Babylon. This place just comes out and speaks smooth words. They speak nice things to you. They say, hey, here's this, but really it's an illusion when they're stabbing you in the back. Because by giving a so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American man, woman, and child liberty, what they're doing is essentially they're telling them, hey, screw your God and do whatever you want. Don't follow the guidelines and regulations that your God gave you. Do what we tell you. And that's why now you have so many Blacks, Hispanics, and Natives celebrating Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, all these days that they make up or that they've stolen from other cultures just so they can keep you out of line with Yahweh and keep you in line with them, essentially programming you to be just a robot and a simpleton. Because only a simpleton would sit here and actually celebrate Easter. Only a simpleton would actually think America is a great country. And we've seen videos and you know we've heard where our own people would sit up here and fight for this country. I'm talking about diehard fans. I'm not talking about the movie. Die hard fans of this country, but yet this country has done nothing but destroy them. This country has done nothing but perpetuate murder, slaughter, and genocide of their people. By all means, with physical, you know, physical, uh, physical attacks, spiritual and mental attacks. You know, you telling a so-called black man that he can be a homosexual, you are destroying him and his entire community. You are destroying his population. You tell a so-called Hispanic man he could continue worshiping the Virgin Mary or Virgin Guadalupe, or whatever. You're destroying him and his community. So this is the liberty and the freedom that's illusion, an illusion that America gives unto you. 
And then it says that they themselves are the servants of corruption. They themselves are corrupt. I thought the scripture says that if uh, Yahweh made something crooked, nobody could turn it straight. Same thing. If Yahweh makes something straight, nobody could turn it crooked. I'm paraphrasing. But essentially, that is what this place is. And that's what America has done is just be a place for corruption, a place full of devils. Um, if you could grab me Revelation 18 and 2, as a matter of fact. Baba Kishawatwara. Because this place has done nothing but once again destroy our people and be a habitation of devils. Now, what's a devil? A deceiver. But also, we know that Satan is ad or our, you know, the word adversary. So it's somebody that goes against you. You feel me? So now you have to take into consideration these words and how they're being thrown around loosely in america oh that's the devil oh that's satan well understand something you are the one who's the devil because you are a politician mayor governor whatever you are you're the one that's spreading lies and you're satan because you're the one who's adverse against yahweh yahweh wants men and women and y'all say men and men yahweh says keep the sabbath which is you know the seventh day of the week, Yah say, do it on the first day of the week. Yahweh says the children of Israel must worship him. Y'all say it's for everybody. So you are saying America, you are, you're Babylon. You're the land of confusion. You have done nothing but destroy our people. And you have done nothing but change the truth of Yahweh into a lie. The greatest one is Sibo the homo. You go. Had your homosexual painters go and paint out that man known as Caesar Bogier and just went around slaughtering and then you brought it up and say, look, bow down to this image or die. And mind you, it's America who perpetuates it because you go to Europe, specifically Rome, Russia, they have the black icons over there. They actually know what the true children of Israel look like. But yet on the Western hemisphere, for some reason, these people don't ever want to mention that. They don't want to mention nothing. What they want to talk about is uh, madness. Essentially what they just did the other day. I was scrolling through the internet, whatever. Now there's transgender visibility day. I think that's what's called. Why? Show me in the scriptures where it says transgender visibility day celebrate these people where is that that is how you know that this place hey, is the land. what's up Bach? hey so lucky y'all I, I was reading about that earlier con that's crazy they trying to turn everything gay <laughs> right uh, a land full of sodomites and, and essentially that's why it says in revelations this place is called spiritually sodom and egypt and the dead bodies that are lying there are us now you could take that dead bodies and use it on multiple aspects a physical aspect yeah our dead bodies are lying in the streets you don't see a chinese man a arabic man lying on 185th and broadway dead but you know who you'll see there you'll see pedro You'll see Tyrone. You'll see John. You feel me? You'll see our people, so called Blacks, Hispanics, and Natives, dead in these streets. And then a spiritual aspect is that we're dead because we're following after the corrupted ways of America. So now we're spiritually dead, covered in darkness, not knowing the truth, not knowing what's going on in America, which is Babylon, just keeps perpetuating destruction. How come? If you ever think about it as a so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native, how come when you listen to other people's music, they don't talk about the destruction of themselves? You feel me? How come they don't actually sit up there and perpetuate Becky to be shaking ass all day and teach that to her daughters? It's just the truth. How come Chun-Li isn't up here talking about up in the smoke or pulling the biscuit out on her fellow Ling Ming sister simply due to her looking at her a wrong way or 
wearing the same dress. I don't hear a song of Edomites, Ishmaelites, Elamites saying that they're going to kill their own brothers, sell drugs to their own brothers, simply due because they're trying to get by or because they had beef with somebody. You don't hear that. But America, for some reason, loves to push it into the Black, Hispanic, and Native communities. You got some up? Like, yeah, that's that crafty council that you need to buy this song. Con, the crafty council, you know, and by doing these things with these crafty councils, by setting up these uh, organizations, by setting up these, um, what's another word you could say for it? Just schemes, right? They put it into place so that it covers us mentally and we're in darkness. You know, I got a whole brother at my job now. Brother beefing with me, like legit beef, simply due to, because I said one of his favorite new rappers, which is trash, I said he was trash. Brother, don't even want to acknowledge me now. You, That's madness. That's you being covered in darkness. That is you following after the way of corruption. You won't even acknowledge your own brother simply due to a musical uh, difference. And I mean, it, it, and it's facts though. The dude that I mentioned is straight garbage, but yet him idolizing this man, not having Yahweh as his God, having this man that talks about murdering his own people, he has him as a God. So when I offended him, when I said that, you know, that rapper was trash. I essentially was saying he was trash because I offended the brother. Right. That's madness. That, that's straight up madness. And this is the ways that so-called blacks, Hispanics and natives have gone after due to the freedom and liberty that America has given you. It's straight up madness up and down. And our people, so-called blacks, Hispanics and natives, they really got to wake up. You have to wake up and smell the coffee. You got to realize that this place does not care for you. Entiende algo. Si usted es moreno, hispano, nativo, este lugar no te ama. Porque ellos no tienen canciones y música de ellos mismos matando, vendiendo drogas. Porque ellos no tienen canciones de las mujeres de ellas, de ellos siendo prostitutas. Pero a nosotros sí. Tú nunca escuchas los chinos, los árabes, los lo hindús haciendo canciones así. Pero nosotros sí. ¿Por qué? ¿Quién es quien lo paga? No son nosotros. We don't pay the checks. We don't write the check. Jay-Z is not up there writing checks to another so-called black man. He's getting the checks from Amalek. He's getting the checks from Esau or another heathen. Son los blanquitos, los güeros que escriben tu cheque y te lo pone y te dice, toma tres millones de dólares, pero tú tienes que hablar de matando tu propia gente. Ellos no lo hacen con cual, cualquier otro grupo de gente, pero con nosotros sí. Este es un lugar de corrupción. Ellos quieren que nosotros seguimos en, uh, en un lugar bajo. They want us to keep being at a lower state. You can't sit here and tell me that it's not an agenda when it clearly is. Um, let me get, uh, and you got that in Revelation 18 too, right? Con, yeah, I got it. Con, do that. I'm sure. Con, it's Revelation 18 and 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, mm -hmm. Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils. The habitation of devils. And, and that's all you see here. You see nothing but madness, and this place is fallen. Go ahead and read, Ock. And the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Right. There's every unclean and foul spirit in America. You want to look for demons? Go to your downtown city. Whatever city you at, go downtown. Go look in the hoods. Hey. Go, the go just look. What's up, Ock? Hey, they want to find demons. They got to go out on Glenwood Avenue. Right, Con. You, look, you want to <laughs> see demons? Come to Raleigh, North Carolina, 
Come to Glenwood Ave on a Friday, Saturday night, and you're going to see nothing but pure demons out there. You're going to find Ooh, Halloween every night. Right, right. On Halloween night, it was horrible out there. And guess what? Those demons were actually manifesting themselves in the metaphysical form. That's what they were doing. Those demons that were on the inside said, let's come out and show the people who we really are. And you had nothing but uh, uh, slutty nurses, uh, uh, devilish whores. You had nothing but men walking around like Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger. That's these demons coming out. And these people, that's what they are. They're actual nightmares. You go to sleep and, and you dream about a damn uh, pale face entity. That's a nightmare. If you're a so-called black, Hispanic or native, you know, if you're an Edomite, hey, whatever, that's you. But if you're a so-called black, Hispanic native and you go to sleep or you pray and you see seeing pale faced entities, that's a demon right there. So this place has become a habitation of devils. And it's always been a habitation of devils since the white man came over here. Now, were the Northern Kingdom, my brothers and sisters going the hell off? Yes, they were. But they were still following a code of conduct at the same time. Were they doing things that they shouldn't have been doing? Of course, they, you know, they were they were supposed to keep the laws, but Northern Kingdom want to always go off. They went off, but they still followed a guideline. The natives still knew the name of Yahweh. The natives still knew that they had to circumcise. They still knew to wear fringes. They still knew that, hey, after battle, I have to separate myself for a certain amount of days because I'm unclean right now. I'm covered in blood. They still had these you know, regulations within their communities, within their villages. But yet comes Esau and you have nothing but now madness just being thrown everywhere. You now have men who are trying to fight you with bare hands. And then here comes the devil with a Gatling gun. That is the habitation of the devil. That is wickedness at, it, at its just forefront. Um, so let me read this real quick in Luke 8 and 17. It says, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. So yeah, nothing is secret. All the secrets of America are being exposed. America's skirt is being lifted up. Ya todos los secretos de los Estados Unidos, ya el mundo lo está descubriendo. Todas las mentiras que ellos han dicho, la verdad está saliendo. Todo lo que ellos querían cubrir, se está abriendo otra vez. Ellos querían cubrir que Cristo era un, uh, un moreno. Te pintaron un Cristo blanco. ¿Qué fue lo que hizo Putin, el presidente de Rusia? Te sacó los imágenes, que son los imágenes verdaderos, y te enseñó. No, Cristo era un moreno. Los ángeles son morenos. Tú tienes toda esta gente que están en el otro lado del mundo, el uh, oeste, diciendo la verdad, pero aquí en el oeste, en los Estados Unidos, solamente te dicen mentiras. Y yeah, ahora, ve lo que está pasando, puentes cayendo, gente muriendo. Comida que ya no está llegando a los mercados. Los Estados Unidos está cayendo. Ya los secretos se están uh, saliendo. Ya se está escapando. The secrets of America, you can't hide them no more. You wanted to hide that the children of Israel were under subjection under you. You wanted to hide that Yahweh and Christ would be a so-called black man. You tried to hide the fact that you, America, are a devilish, bloody, murdering, psychopathical, uh, 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 sociopathical country as well. They've done studies, they've done research. When you look up who's the most psychopathic person, who's the most uh, uh, sociopathic, they're all Edomites. Why? You could Google right now America's top 100 serial killers. You might see maybe two or three. No, actually, no. Nah, I'll be really, I think it's like five. You see like maybe like five or six Israelites, both between the northern and southern kingdom. And everybody else is Esau. Why? Because this place and them specifically are just devils. They bring that over here to this land. And now this land has done nothing but perpetuate madness, 
murder, rape, slaughter, torture, extermination, genocide, not just of people, but of animals. Imagínate, ¿cuándo fue que los animales tenían paz también? Porque este país hasta los animales lo matan, o si no, lo tiran en jaulas. ¿Dónde está en la Biblia donde Dios dice, agarra un animal y tíralo en una jaula para que la gente pueda tirar foto? ¿Dónde está esto? Los animales uno tiene que respetarlo y dejarlo en paz. Porque yo voy ahí a las junglas y digo a meterme con un tigre y para matarlo, para que yo pueda después mocharle la cabeza y ponerlo en, en mi cuarto. ¿Quién hace eso? La gente que gobierna este país, ellos hacen eso. That's wicked. Show me where in the scripture says cut off a tiger's head and mount it up in your living room. Enseñame. Donde dice eso en las escrituras? Y cuando fue que nuestra gente hacían eso? We didn't do that. When we actually killed an animal, it was for a reason. Food, medicinal, clothing. We used the animal. Esau just go chop the head off. Now I just want to mount it up. That's wicked. So even the animals themselves, they've, get, they've gone exterminated because of the madness that Esau has done. Los animales, hay animales que ya no existen por la culpa de esta gente. Había todo tipo de animales y ya ahora dicen, no, que solamente hay X número de leones. ¿Dónde se fueron? Si no están en jaula, ustedes son los que lo están matando. Pero ustedes dicen que este es el país de Dios, que ustedes son la gente de Dios. Eso es mentira del diablo, que son ustedes. This place has said, always says, and God we trust. Oh, uh, liberty, God. No, your God is Satan. That's who's the God of America. Nowhere in the scripts does it say anything about exterminating animals. Even animals get wiped out. That's madness. That's wicked and evil. So now the secrets of America is coming out. And now you see what's going on. There's diseases. We had it with the vid. You have uh famines going on there's shortages in some places uh you know you got buildings getting destroyed bridges now collapsing all of a sudden america is falling slowly and surely because when yahweh says something it's going to happen he's not a man you feel me that he lies and whatever he says doesn't come back to him void everything he says will happen so when he said that babylon will fall Esau is going to get his, his judgment. It's happening right before our very eyes. But our people, so-called Black, Hispanics, and Natives, we just, we're not seeing it because we're still comfortable with this illusion of liberty. Let me get, um, can you grab me the three holy children, uh, one and nine, Baba Kasha? I'm going to grab real quick 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. And Second Thessalonians says two and eight, right here. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonders. Uh, I'll read 10 as well. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, so understand that that wicked is going to be revealed. And who's the most wicked person on this planet? Who's the most wicked country on this planet? It's America. It is, straight up and down. Ustedes solamente tienen que agarrar un libro y ponte a leer. ¿Cuál país es el país más malo en este mundo? En los Estados Unidos. Los factos y los datos están ahí. Tú solamente tienes que agarrar y leer. Pero eso es algo que nosotros no, no nos gusta hacer, especialmente el, el hombre dominicano, que solamente quiere estar en chelcha, en bebedera. Agarra un libro y ponte a leer para que tú puedas ver qué es lo que está pasando en este mundo. Todo lo que está pasando alrededor tuyo no es por solamente coincidencia, no es solamente porque pasó. No, todo tiene su razón. So our people really got to wake up. Our people really have to understand that this place doesn't care for them at all and that this place has nothing but wicked men and that this country is wicked. So when it says that 
and then shall that wicked be revealed. That's what's happening right now. You're seeing Esau being revealed. America is getting exposed. This country that has had this facade of love, peace, and unity for so long, it's now actually being exposed. And brothers that, you know, been in the truth, they've been saying this stuff. For the elders that's been in this truth, they've been telling our people. But our people back then, and even to this day, they just don't care. Because they still have fallen into that darkness, and they're still gravitating to the illusion of liberty, freedom, and love that America gives you. But it's said in Second Peter that those people were corrupt. The ones that, that give out this liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. So then how can I follow, how can I be godly when the leaders that we follow are ungodly, but they're corrupt? That is why in America you have so much school shootings, mass shootings. Preguntase eso. ¿Por qué que este país es el único país que tiene tantos asesinos? Donde viene un chamaquito con un, un, una escopeta y, y, y acaba con todos. Los demás países tienen armas de fuego también. Pero ¿por qué que este país, este que está aquí, siempre tiene un problema con eso? Uno está en, eh, en el cine viendo una película y viene un, un, un loco, tiroteo. A matar cualquier persona. Es porque este lugar, este país es el país del diablo. Este país es controlado por el diablo. ¿Quién es? Los blanquitos. Straight up and down. Esau is the white man. Straight up and down. Esau is also the devil. You can't get around that. This man is wicked. And he controls this country. He controls not just this country, but now the entire world using this country. Now, uh, you got that out in um, Three Holy Children? Uh, it says, uh, and, thou, and thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful forsakers of God, and to mm -hmm. an unjust king. And the most wicked in all the world. You see that? So we know that we've been delivered unto Esau, the most wicked on the world in the world. Hateful forsakers of God. They don't care about nothing. They break all their oaths and truths. Uh, and, and you know the, the truths that they say, they break all that. Every single promise that they say, they break it. Uh, the treaties that they did with the natives, they break them. Treaties that they make with other countries, they break them. Um, hell, let's go a bit, little bit back in time. World War II. A lot of people don't even know that it was America that was giving Hitler money. How does Germany, who just got decimated in World War I and the blame got thrown on them, right, for everything, and they had to do what was it, the Treaty of Versailles and all that, how's it that they're destitute of money, resources, and then within a couple of years, boom, Hitler got tanks. He's, he's trying to work on nuclear bombs. He got airplanes, fighter jets. He got military. Who gave them that money? And then want to go and play like the good guy and say, oh, we're here to save the day. That's America for you. They like to throw rocks and then hide their hands, both of them. They'll go. Mm, we ain't do it. That wasn't us. But then they'll come and try to act like they're there for you. They'll throw the rock at you. Sm the rocks smack you in your dome. They hide their hand and run up with the bandaid. Say, hey, I don't know who did it, but look, I'm here to help you. Those are lies. So these people, they hate Yahweh. These people hate us. This country despises everything that is godly. They love unrighteousness. And they break all their promises. And then we know that their kings, which are the presidents, are unjust. Most of your presidents had slaves. These presidents, too, were evil, wicked men. The presidents that you have now are evil, wicked men. From Well, from, you know, me remembering, because I'm only 23, but for the older generations that remember those presidents, those were evil, wicked men. 
But in my time, you know, you had George Bush, and after Bush, you had Obama. After Obama came Trump, and now Biden. All those men, wicked and evil. What did Bush do? He went and started messing with the Ishmaelites, bombing them. Then you had Obama. What did he push for? Homosexuality. Then you had Donald Trump, who's like the epitome of Esau, just racist as hell and evil. And then now you have America's, I guess, favorite guy, Sleepy Joe, who um, really shows himself as who he is, which is a devil, by doing commercials with uh, so-called black people and bringing them fried chicken because that's how he, you know, he, he knows black people. So they themselves show you who they are and our people continue to cater to this facade of America being this grandiose country. How I like to say America and how I spell it is with three Ks people, three because that's what you need to know that this place still has that embedded hatred of you, of your God, of your religion, of your culture, your heritage. They have all that hatred still in there. So once again, they have unjust kings. They continue to perpetuate madness. They continue to tell you that it's okay to not follow the laws of God. How then can this place not be any other place but Babylon. If I go to any Ishmaelite country, if I go to any Moabite country, they have their guidelines and rules and say, no, this is how we do it because this is what our book says. So if I were to be born and raised in Iran, Iraq, Morocco, any of those countries where you have Arabics, right? I would be following the guidelines of that culture, right? If I was one of them. And I would be following it to a T because that is how they carry themselves through the book that is their philosophies of, you know, their heritage. Well, so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native people, your heritage is the Bible. Your culture, your guidelines is the Bible itself. But yet, America will tell you, nah, you don't have to follow nothing in there. John 3.16, Go be a homosexual and go murder people. You're good to go. That is madness. That is how you know that this place is a land of confusion. That's how you know that this place has uh, their best interest at heart, but your uh, worst interest in their heart. They want you as a so-called Black, Hispanic, Native man, woman, and child to stay destitute of your true heritage. Hence the freedom. Hence the liberty. But if you give someone too much liberty, what happens? Especially if you're not guiding them correctly, because none of these leaders that they have put up, even if they end up being our people, they don't guide us correctly. Show me Oprah Winfrey uh, teaching the law. Show me Michael Jordan, LeBron, Jay-Z, uh, the diddler himself, right, P. Diddy. Show me these people who were out there with Bibles telling young people Black, Hispanic, and Native American men, that they need to be men by following the laws. But instead, what do they help perpetuate? Madness. Hey, so lucky, I got a precept that go along with you bringing out. Tom, bring it out. This Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16, it says, for the leaders of this people caused them to err. So like you were going into, like even what you was talking about earlier, how when you look at the music industry, they put our people at a negative light, right? All the so-called black man is, is just a thug and a game banger, right? He a blood, a crip, a drug dealer, right? The so-called black and Hispanic women, they just strippers and prostitutes and all they do is twerk. Right, and you got females like Glow Really, she and her music videos throwing up gang signs, right? Right. So that they they trying to make it seem like it's cool for now the females to be in games, right? The females game baby. You see that? Tom, uh, um uh what's her name? Oh. Cardi B. Uh Salaki yep. Cardi B. She's a stripper, but yeah, she she'll show off the blood gangs that she's been affiliated with in the Bronx, New York, and her music videos. Right, you see that? 
So we don't have no positive role models, right? Mm -hmm. So it says, for the leaders of this people caused them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed, right? So you got the blind leading the blind. See that? Tom, that's right. That's what you see in America is the blind leading the blind. I'm going to read Ezekiel 25 and 5 real quick. And it says, because thou has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. So, again, what other country? Now, we know Moab, Ishmael, Elam. We know that they hate us. We know that they've shed our blood. But what country, what group of people have constantly shed our blood like no other? What other country had so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native people and just straight up started wiping them out? They preserved us because they needed workers, but who just, if it was up to them, they would have just wiped all of us out. They would have said, hell no, we don't need no more of them damn spigs. Get them all out of here. So. That is, once again, showing you that this place is evil. This place is Babylon. This place has nothing but perpetual hatred towards you, so-called Black, Hispanic, Native American, man, woman, and child. You know, we, as men, we specifically talk mostly to the men because that's who our, our main audience is as men. As a man, I'm going to speak to you, the men because why? We're the leaders. But don't get it wrong, women and children, they have done debaucherous, evil, heinous acts towards our women and children. Don't get it twisted now. Just because you're a woman or a child or an elderly, you will get screwed up in America. You will be destroyed in this land known as spiritual Babylon. There's Our women have been hung, lynched, castrated had their babies ripped out their stomachs. They've stomped out our babies, smashed them up against stones, fed them to alligators. That is perpetual hatred. Our elderly people got beaten to death, worked to death. This is what this country has done to us. So don't fall as a so-called Black, Hispanic, Native American, man, woman, child. Don't fall into the illusion of love here. Don't fall into the illusion of liberty. Because what liberty have they given you? What freedom have they given you? Freedom is not free in America. You're paying taxes. You have a social. You have a birth certificate. You want to go out of the country, you have to get a passport. And don't stay in that country too long because they're coming to get you. Because you're property to them. So that is why we, you know, Hebrew Israelites, from various camps are out here on the highways and byways teaching our people to wake up because at the end of the day, whether y'all want to accept it or not, you are still in captivity. You are still in this place known as America that has a perpetual hatred for you. Till this day, in 2024 now, 2024, right? You have our people still getting hung. Make that make sense. Although Biden a couple of years ago made it a, a law that you can't, the anti-lynching law. He, he signed the bill in like 2021 or 2022, but yet till this day, they're still doing it. That's how you know that this place never cared for you. That's how you know that also as a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American man, woman, and child, we got to clean our act up and figure something out for ourselves. Now, brothers that are in the truth, we know what it is that we have to do which is keep following these law, statutes, and commandments and teaching it to our people. But our people, they need to have it click in their heads and say, yo, some got to work, something got to give. This ain't working at all. We've been here marching, protesting. We've been in the Christian church for four or 500 years and it's still not working. Something has to give. But our people, they're comfortable and complacent being in this place that kills them and endorses madness. Matter of fact, not only does it endorse it, it sponsors it. All your high-ranked uh, celebrities get endorsements and sponsorships 
just like how me and the brother Yashwan were talking about and the music industry and whatnot, they all get endorsements and sponsorships to perpetuate wickedness. Why? Why don't Hebrew Israelites get sponsorships and endorsements from the government and from high people and, you know, high ranked society area of and whatnot status? Why don't we get that when we're actually trying to teach what is right? But we don't. Instead, we get scrutinized. You teach the truth and you get hate for it. That is how you know that this place, America, is wicked and hypocritical. Why is it that if I go out and start making songs about killing my own brother, pouring my women out, selling drugs to my own people, I will get endorsed for it and sponsored. I'm talking about out of nowhere, you start seeing my song on the uh, Billboard 100. Media play from everywhere. But the minute you come out and say, hey, God uh, only loves the children of Israel, Christ will be a so-called black man, Blacks, Hispanics, and Natives are the children of Israel. Y'all got to clean your act up. Stop following, you know, these holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter. Everybody hates you, specifically this country. They hate you and despise you. Why? Because America is nothing but evil at its core. That's all it is. It's just evil. It's wicked. It's lawless. These places have laws. This country has laws, but they don't implement them. Not in the way that you think, because what's the statute of limitation of murder in America? There is none. Not by the amounts of blood that they've shed from so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Natives. Over 200 million of our people combined have they murdered. And, and guess what? Not a single one of those people that did that and their children, not a single one of them is thrown in prison. Not a single one has came out and said, you know what, uh, 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 Yashawan, Adawan, Adawan Yashawan, here's my whole bank account. Here's my 401k. I feel horrible and I'm going to throw myself in a cell for what my family did. They haven't done that, but yet they'll continue to perpetuate the madness and, and the sickness because that's what it is to its sickening of this place. They're saying that there's freedom, liberty, and love, and yet their love is stabbing you. Their love is hanging you on a tree. Their love is still selling you cigarettes, selling you swine, selling you products and things that can kill you. Let me read this uh, in Ezekiel 25 now real quick. And if you got anything to say, Ak, you could go ahead and say it. Um, Ezekiel 25 and 5. Salakia. 12, that's what I meant, Ezekiel 25 and 12. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and hath greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it. And I will make it desolate from Teman, and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord. And once again, I'm just bringing out these points to show that this place isn't going to last forever. Every kingdom has its fall, except the kingdom that's coming. The kingdom to come will reign forever, but as of now, from now to the past, every single rulership, every single kingdom has fallen. And this place will fall as well. Because it's already written. Yahweh already said so. And mostly due to what? The vengeance that they have taken upon the children of Israel. Now, let me get. Uh, can you grab me Amos 1 and 11 verse 12 and 12? And I'm going to grab the book of Obi, Obadiah. So our people need to understand that this place is Babylon. This place doesn't care for you. This place has nothing but hatred for you. And as a matter of fact, before I even grab Obadiah, 
let me grab this real quick and have a cook. Two and twelve. And it says, Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and established a city by iniquity. And is that not what America is? A country that has been established by blood. There's cities that have been built up by iniquity, subjugating the children of Israel. And then you come up with these laws and regulations to keep them oppressed. You then come up with these laws and regulations to uplift other people that have nothing to do with oppression, but somehow say, hey, these people have been oppressed too. They need a voice. A Anti-Asian hate bill, uh, uh, anti-LGBT uh, no hate bill and all that stuff. When the hell have those people ever been oppressed? But they get more access and uh, uh, rights than we do. Our people, so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Natives, who've been here on this land getting destroyed, subjugated, murdered, tortured, all types of just evil, heinous things have happened to us and we don't get nothing. But yet, all of a sudden this movement comes out in 2015, 16, hey, we gotta make everything for them. We gotta do everything for them, make everything accessible for them, why? They say, oh, they've been oppressed. But what about us? We've been oppressed. They go and sign anti-Asian hate law, whatever, anti-Asian hate bill. Where's the anti-black man bill, uh, anti-black man hate bill, anti-Hispanic man hate bill, anti-Native American hate bill? Where's that at? You don't see it. But yet this place will continue to throw the facade of liberty, love peace this place will continue throwing illusions at you telling you that this is a grandiose country telling you that this place is where you should come if you're looking for the american dream well i'll tell you what the american dream is if you're a heathen it's subjugate these uh so-called niggas and spicks keep them at the bottom of your foot and you get rich but the american dream it doesn't exist for us because the american dream for us is actually a nightmare we're the ones in the hoods and ghettos. We're the ones that have to suffer. We're the ones who are first uh, fired, last hired. We're the ones who can't get loans, credit score jacked up, fridge empty. We're the ones who actually go through these things and yet nobody in this country, within the politicians, within our elders and leaders, not a single one actually says, hey, let's step up for these people. Nobody has done it. That's why I said in, uh, in uh, Zeph Zephaniah when it says that they further the affliction and that there was no one to help. Nobody wants to help us, but yet let two Asian people get snuffed out and all of a sudden now there's anti-Asian hate laws. Let a sodomite get beat up and now there's all these uh, uh, regulations on you can't say this and that or do this and that to a sodomite. But yet you could go and kill a nigga you could grab a spick and throw him up on a tree and hang him. You could grab one of these natives and burn him alive. It's fine. That's madness. That is why our people have to, uh, well, like it says in Revelations, come out of her, my people. That is what we have to do. Now, if you can't leave on the physical, we understand that because we can't leave on the physical, but it's the mental. Come out of her. We got to come out of these philosophies. We have to come out of the facade of what America uh, tries to portray itself as. We as so-called Black, Hispanics, Natives got to come together and realize this place isn't for us and go back to our culture, go back to our heritage, go back to the law, statutes, and commandments that Yahweh gave to us. But we don't want to do it. We're, we're, we're stuck and complacent and stagnant with having Sexy Red as our leader, with having Nicki Minaj as our leader, with having LeBron James as our leader, with having a uh, 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 who else? Uh, Bill Cosby as our leader, the Diddler as our leader. We're complacent with having these people be our leaders and they do absolutely nothing for us. And then if it ain't them, we're complacent with having Joe Biden and all these other. Edomite politicians, I don't know who they are. 
Mitt Romney's and all them. We're, we're cool with that. We're complacent with having these people who are not our people as leaders over us telling them our leaders what to do. Make that make sense. Kanye West went from a billionaire to a thousandaire like that simply due to the fact that he said the Jews were black. Why? Because this land is wicked. This land doesn't want you to speak the truth. And they don't want our people to actually come out and preach truth. Um, and then I'm going to grab real quick numbers 35 and 33. Because just like how I read in Habakkuk that this place has been built upon blood, murder, torture, slaughter, and slaughtering. But yet they'll say, in God we trust, that can't go together. You can't say, in God you trust, and then you go around and just start slaughtering people for no reason. You can't say, in God we trust, but then you're ripping babies out of women's stomachs. And this is what the law says, because they have, America has a law, right? They make you swear on the Bible when you're in court, right? Well, let's see what the law says in the book of Numbers. Numbers 35 and 33 and this is what it says so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are for blood it defileth the land and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein but by the blood of him that shed it you can't pollute the land with blood and america and the americans right who are the edomites who came over here and saw the gadites the reubenites simeonites ephraimites the whole northern kingdom they say you know what murder them just go have at it and then they do what they be, they create and build their cities but the law says you can't do that you can't pollute the land with blood and the only way that blood can be cleansed is by the blood of him that shed it so that means hey if y'all want to make america clean like how they say make america great again here you go i got your tip you want to make america great again you got to wipe your own people out, Esau. That's what you got to do. You want to make America great, you have to wipe your own people out. Because you have broken the law that you say that you supposedly believe in. But we know it's a lie. We know that America lies over and over again. They'll tell you, put your right hand on the Bible in the court, and yet they themselves will break whatever uh, truth they want to say. America's hell is so hypocritical. The minute you lie on stand, the court case is done for, right? Look at how evil America is. The minute you lie on stand, court case done for. They got to go through the whole process again, right? What's her name? The whore, Megan the Stallion, who's calling herself a male horse, by the way, lied on stand, and yet everything still went through. Why? And how is it that you say, swear on the Bible, but yet you could allow people to lie just so you can get your, you know, gain and benefits of throwing another black man in prison, getting the money off of him. And then our people look at that and they say, oh, well, shoot, if they do it, I could do it too. So then now how many more false, and we've already seen mad false testimonies lying on the stand that's already been happening but now with the social media influence how much more of our people are willing to do that but the law says you can't bear false witness and this is something that again hey america's just a hey, do it so they tell you it's okay to lie they have done nothing but shed the blood of our people. The only way that this land can be cleansed is by their blood to be shed, but they're not willing to do that. They don't wanna do that. Why, why is Gregory gonna wipe out Billy? He's not gonna do that. He loves Billy, but guess what? He'll come at you and tell you, hey, God loves you. I love you. He'll look at you and try to even give you a hug and say, no, I'm here for love and peace. But yet America has done nothing but be that bloody city. That bloody city that has shed the so-called black, Hispanic, and native man, woman, and child's blood. Ustedes solamente tienen que agarrar y leer. 
¿Cómo que este país dice que creen en Dios, pero te dejan mentir en, en el corte? ¿Cómo que ellos dicen creen en Dios, pero vinieron para acá y hicieron un desastre con los nativos? ¿En cuál Dios es que ellos confíen? ¿En cuál Dios es que ellos creen? Ellos mismos es el, el Dios. El Dios de ellos son ellos mismos. Eso porque ellos solamente están tan interesados con que dinero, con matanza. ¿Dónde está eso en las escrituras? Pero tienen miles de iglesias en este país. Pero ellos siguen matándote. Ellos siguen tirando drogas en tus comunidades. Ellos siguen uh, uh, con las mentiras. Siguen con las mentiras, siguen con la hipocresía, pero ellos creen en Dios. Make that make sense. You continue on with the madness and hypocrisy, but in God you trust. It doesn't make sense at all. Uh, if you could grab from me real quick, Ak, 2 Ezra 12 and 11, Babka Shah. You still want that Amos 1-11? Khan, actually, yeah, give me that. It's locked here. Khan, it says, Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Mm -hmm. Be because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity. And his anger did tear perpetually. And he kept his wrath forever. Yeah. You see that? A perpetual hatred for us kept the wrath forever. Till this day, they have done nothing but just straight up do evil, heinous acts. They may not come at you in a physical aspect. That's fine. We get that. But they're going to use all their resources and money and pull everything that they have to keep you down low by destroying you with other forms, media, music movies tv everything that they can think of but then the government too using their laws and regulations they're keeping you down that is why our people have to wake up let me grab this real quick in uh obadiah this is a uh, obadiah three and four well chapter one verse three and four the pride of thine heart have deceived thee Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, keep that in mind, people, and thou, and thou though settest thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So these people are very prideful. This country is very prideful. What country? Is more prideful than America. ¿Cuál país es que tú ves que tiene tanto egoísmo como los Estados Unidos? Ningún, ningún otro país tiene el ego de los Estados Unidos. No se puede comparar. Ellos aquí tienen tanto egoísmo de que de lo que hicieron sus padres. O oh, si sí, nosotros vinimos y conquistaron los, los nativos. Nosotros venimos y acabamos con todos ellos. Ahora esto es nosotros. Ellos tienen ese ego. También dice que son como la águila. Eso porque en la bandera de los Estados Unidos tienen que la águila. Pero no solamente lo dice en ese versículo, lo dice en varios versículos en la Biblia. Que esta gente se representan como la águila. Entonces ve que este país es Babilonia. Go ahead and uh, you got that in second Ezra. Uh, what was that in second Ezra? Uh, twelve and eleven, Baba Kisha. Twelve and eleven. Come, on, I got it. It um, says the eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. Mm -hmm. But it was not expounded unto him. Therefore, now I declare it unto thee. Behold, the days will come that there shall rise up a kingdom upon earth. And it shall be feared above all the kingdoms that were before it. Yeah, you see that? 
So this kingdom is coming like the eagle, it rising up above the earth, and it's being feared by all nations. Now, what kingdom is that? That's Babylon. That's America. Who went around dropping nuclear bombs on other people? Who went around decimating other people just because they didn't follow their laws and regulations or laws and regulations, right? Who went and destroyed other countries simply due to the fact that they still want to keep their culture and their identity? ¿Cuál otro país hizo eso? Dice ahí en el libro de Segundo Estras que este país que va a subir lo demás naciones va a tener miedo de ellos. ¿Por qué ellos tienen miedo? Porque ¿quién fue que tiró bombas atómicas en los demás países? ¿Quién fue que fue para pa Japón, para Alemania, para países eh, en África y destruyó a esa gente solamente porque ellos querían seguir con su vida? Ellos fueron a, hace unos años para atrás que el presidente de Ghana le dijo nosotros no vamos a aceptar los homosexuales. Déjanos en paz que nosotros queremos seguir con nuestra cultura. ¿Y qué fue lo que los Estados Unidos le hizo? Le quitaron a uh, su agricultura. Todo lo que ellos tienen para, tú sabes, comer y todo eso. No, se lo quitaron. Después le pusieron un bloqueo en el dinero. Who does that? Solamente alguien que hace eso es alguien del diablo. This place is wicked. They go around destroying other countries, sanctioning countries too, if you don't comply with what they say. The president of Ghana a couple of years back said, yo, oh, not Ghana, I think it was Uganda. It was Uganda. He said, hey, we're not going to accept homosexuality over here. We want to preserve our culture and our rights. We want to do what we've been doing. And what did America do? They sanctioned that country. So now they don't, you know, have the money and the funds to get the resources that they need. But yet this place, once again, hey, liberty, love, and peace, right? Supposedly. It's all a facade, people. Now let me get, uh, actually, I'm going to read it. Second Ezra 11 and 44 to 46. And it reads, the highest also have looked upon the proud times, and behold, they are ended, and his abominations are fulfilled. Uh, look, so again, Yahweh was looking at the proud times. This person who exalts himself, this person who is just very prideful, and who's more prideful than Esau, who's more prideful than America, and his abominations are fulfilled. You could do literally whatever you want. You want to get married to an animal? Guess what? There's states here in America that allow you to do that. Pedestrian pedophilia? Guess what? Although they want to hide it and whatnot, it's very open in America. Just go ask your friendly neighborhood pastor, and he'll tell you, or he might not, but hey, it's there. These people do these things. Verse 45, and therefore, appear no more thou eagle, nor thy horrible wings nor thy wicked feathers, nor thy malicious heads, nor thy hurtful claws, nor all thy vain body, that all the earth may be refreshed and may return, being delivered from thy violence, and that she may hope for the judgment and mercy of him that made her. So even the earth itself, hasta la tierra, la planeta mismo, está pidiendo para misericordia. Hasta la planeta está diciendo está alto de esta gente. Ahí lo dice, lo dice. Segundo Ezra 11, 44 a 46. ¿Y qué fue lo que dice otra vez? Que ya no va en este tiempo, porque esto es una profecía, que va a pasar. Cuando pase esto, que esa águila ya no va a estar. Esa águila es que el representaje de quién? Los Estados Unidos. Los Edomitas, los gringos. That's who they are. So this place has done so much wickedness to humankind and then to the planet itself that even the planet is tired of, it, of the violence. Who's going around putting 90,000 ton, uh, ton drills into the earth to suck oil out of it? Who's going around throwing all types of trash, waste, pollution in the ocean? Who's polluting the air? Who's destroying the food? 
Who's destroying the water? They're throwing all types of uh, 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 fluorine and chemicals in your water. They're throwing all types of stuff in your food. The animals, they're going extinct. You have plants. Hasta los árboles en plantas. Hay plantas que ya no existen. You have plants and tree life and all types of other herbal life that don't exist no more. How? There's supposed to be natural things that come from the earth and they don't exist no more because these wicked people, this wicked country does nothing but decimate. And uh, if you could grab me, Ak, real quick, Psalms 73 and 3. And then I'm going to grab real quick uh, Revelation 13. So, hey, hey, Ephraim, you there? Khan! Hey, hey shout out, Wong. Hey, we've been, we been waiting for him, man. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you got you to gotta start getting some of these precepts. Khan, what do you need? Psalm 73 3? Yeah, Psalm 73 and 3. Bob the shot. The mighty Taino twin. So, yeah. Once again, this whole lesson is just for our people to understand that this place is not your rest and that America is Babylon. Babylon is America. They go hand in hand. You think of America, you think of homosexuality and destruction and confusion. You think of Babylon, you think of destruction and confusion. That's what Babylon means, confusion. And that's what this place has brought forth. Nothing but confusion. Go ahead and uh, read um, verse three down to nine. Huh. The book of Psalms, chapter 73 and verse 3, it says, For I was envious at the foolish mm -hmm. when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. The what? The wicked. The prosperity of the wicked. So you see that these people being wicked, they prosper. And that's what this country does and perpetuate. You're wicked, you're going to be good they'll take care of you but let you start speaking truth and now you, you getting your accounts revoked you might get your uh your 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 bank account frozen and seized all types of madness go ahead and read on come it says for there are no bands in their death but their strength is firm they are not in trouble as other men mm -hmm. neither are they plagued like other men Mm -hmm. Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. And Violence right covereth them. Salaki, read that verse again, because that right there shows once again how Esau is and how America is. That because there hasn't been anything that happened to this place as of yet, what they have done is built up this ego, this pride that is so high. And to them, they hold it dear. They hold that pride so close to their heart because there's they they say, look what we've done. We've bombed all these countries. Everybody's afraid of us. Nobody's willing to attack us. But trust that day is coming. Read it again. It says, uh, therefore, pride compass them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They mm -hmm. have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They see speak wickedly. They're corrupt and they speak wickedly concerning oppression. And who are the most oppressed people in America? So-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Natives. And how do we know that they're corrupt? We see it by everything that they do. They're corrupt. These people make laws of corruption. These people make regulations that are corrupt. Their CEOs are corrupt. Their business enterprises and, and, and industries are corrupt. Everything they do is corrupt. And then what do they do also? They speak wickedly concerning oppression because you being a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American man, woman, working in the, their fields that are corrupt, guess what happens? A Edomite that can have no experience in that job gets a higher position over you you've been there 10 15 years breaking a sweat breaking your back blood sweat and tears going all in 
And what happens? Here comes Todd through the front door, and now he's made GM. Now he's a chairman VIP or whatever. But yet, you've been there doing everything you can, and all you get is a 50 cent raise. All you get is maybe a 50 cent raise and a gift card to Target. So they they sit up there in their big offices saying, let's keep these so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Natives down. Let's keep these niggas at the bottom. That's what they say to themselves. Go ahead and read on up. Con, I was gonna say they they're gonna give you uh they're gonna give you a one point five percent raise and give right. you a, a a bonus that gets taxed uh eighty three percent. Right. And then while they do that, they might throw you a, a damn poor pork sandwich and say, "Here you go." Eat there that. you go with a little extra <laughs> bacon on top. Yeah, they're going to throw you a pulled pork sandwich with some extra bacon bits on top and say, there you go. Have at it. Enjoy. God. But they want us to remember 9-11, right? They right. want us to remember, you know, uh, uh, the Holocaust. They want us to remember right. all these things that belong to them. Remember the Alamo, you know? But when mm -hmm. it comes to us, it's like, oh, well, don't worry about it. It's, it was in the past. Forget about it. Right, but it says, uh, verse 9, it says, They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Con. So, yeah, they set their mouth against the heavens because they say, who is like us? Who is like America? E they even say, even God can't touch us. That's Hey, ain't that what happened with Titanic? They said, not even God could sink this boat. And look what happened. Dumbass mm -hmm. Edomite got the boat sank. And it got split in half. It split in half. So Esau is so corrupt. Esau speaks nothing but wickedness. They are very prideful. And this country walks around speaking against the heavens. And then their tongue walketh through the earth. That's them going to every country with their philosophies. You got to accept these homos. You got to accept this white Jesus. And if not, sanctions and get bombed. If not, we're going to come through and start just raping your women and killing all your children. That's their tongue walking through the earth. And these other, just like how it was in Second Ezra, these nations, they fear that nation. They fear America because they don't want to get hit with a nuclear bomb. Everybody saw what happened to the Japanese man, woman, and child, uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They saw what, that. They saw how their shadows were still left imprinted on the concrete, on the walls. And these people standing still just turned into ash. You think after they saw that, they said, hmm, we need to we need to fight them. No, they were afraid of them. But guess what? Now, with everything going on, with technology, you know, increasing, these other nations, they're saying, hey, you know what, America? We're not scared no more. You got nukes. We got nukes, too. Let's end the world. They're ready for it. Putin, he ready for it. So I'm going to grab, um, I'm going to read this real quick in Revelation 13 and 5. And it says, and there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. So once again, this mouth is speaking blasphemies, great things and power, right? Now, we know that that power is just a facade. We know that that power that Esau has really isn't power. True power is walking in righteousness. True power is doing the things that Yahweh has said. Their power, though, it comes from the left-hand side. It comes from Satan, dropping bombs, killing people. That's their power. That's not real power. They walk around speaking lies and blasphemy, telling you that you can't keep the commandments. But guess what? You can still follow all of America's laws. That's, a bl that's blasphemous. You can't keep God's commandments which only 613, but America has over 20,000 laws and you can follow every single one of them. That's a damn lie. So these people, they have done nothing but show themselves who they are to us and yet our people continue to walk blind, continue being in that darkness like we read earlier, a land of darkness. And the people being in the land of darkness are in, in spiritual darkness. So our people, so-called Black Hispanics and Natives, ustedes tienen que levantarse. Ustedes tienen que entender todo lo que está pasando. Este país es Babilonia y Babilonia 
va a caer. Nosotros tenemos que arrepentirnos de los pecados que hicimos. Nosotros tenemos que pedir perdón con Dios. Regresar a nuestra cultura, nuestra herencia que Dios nos, nos dio siendo israelitas y dejar las filosofías y ideologías de los Estados Unidos. And then, um, Grammy Mike the two and two. Real quick, Papa Kisha. And I'm going to grab these last couple of precepts and it's going to be that. So, yeah. Our people, y'all got to wake up. You have to understand that these people, that this country is not your rest. This place is Babylon. I could read it if you want me to. No, I got it, King. You said two and two? Yeah, two and two. All right, the book of Micah, chapter 2 and verse 2. And they covet fields and take mm -hmm. them by violence. How do they take them again? By violence. By violence. Read. And houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. You see Therefore, that? thus saith Yahweh. Salaki. But uh, I just need verse two. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, it's a lot here. So yeah, these people, they covet fields. And we know what coveting means. And they take them by violence. And not just the fields. They take the house by violence. Then they take the man by violence. The, and his whole house, which is women and children. If he has servants too. They take all that by violence. These people. And then they oppress that man. Then they oppress that house. Then they take his heritage away. And they do it violently. That is what America has done to us. Los Estados Unidos, ¿qué fue lo que hicieron? Vieron con violencia contra nosotros y nos quitaron nuestra herencia, nuestra cultura. Vinieron con violencia y no opresaron. No tenían esclavitud. Todavía no tienen esclavitud. Y eso porque ustedes están pagando impuestos. Eso porque ustedes tienen un número social. So, Once again, their character and their nature is being shown over and over and over and over. It's pretty much like a hamster on a wheel. It's a nonstop cycle. And yet our people are the only ones who can't look at that hamster on the wheel and say, it's doing the same thing it's been doing since it got there. Our people think that the hamster is now doing jumping jacks and push-ups on the wheel. When, it, when reality has been doing the same thing over and over again. Um, let me get Revelation 18 and 4. And if, uh, Yashwan, if you could grab me um, Matthew 3 and 2, and that's going to be my last one. And if y'all brothers got anything to say, feel free by all means. All praise to the Most High. You ready for that Revelation, King? Con. The book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 3. It says, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication mm -hmm. and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies Calm. so real quick before we get to the next part all nations have drunk of the wine of her of the wrath of her fornication now why because all nations they have had to sit there and actually even say you know what We got to do what these people say, because if not, we get bombed. Now, some of them, they're in cahoots with America. We know. But as for the most part, the, the you know, the third world countries, as they call it, they had no choice but to follow under Esau and America's guidelines. How are they going to combat against America and America come through with fighter jets and dropping nuclear bombs on you? Air, yeah. Aircraft carriers, tanks. How do they compete with that? So they had to bow down. They had to drink of that wrath. They had to take that fornication and say, you know what? It is what it is. But understand something. All those nations, too, they're going to get their, ju their judgment through. And once Babylon's out the way, peace is going to be restored 
on earth once the true children of Israel are back in the rightful estate. Till then, y'all gonna keep getting bombed. So for all these nations that want America out of their land, guess what? Help the children of Israel get back to their land and to where they need to be. And then guess what? You won't have America up your ass. Right. Hey, Salakia, look at that ESV translation. Tom. It says, it says, for all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality, and the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her, and the merchants right. of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. Con, and is that not America right there? Mm -hmm. if, if, if somebody has a hard time reading the King James Version, read the ESV, read the NLT. And you tell me what that exact uh, breakdown, what that verse actually meant right there. You can't grab that verse and then say, this applies to China, this applies to Russia, this applies to uh, Uganda or Ghana. Just that one verse. And, and I'm talking about, you could literally show that to an atheist and be like, what country is this talking about? What is this talking about? And more than likely, they're going to look at it and go, that's probably talking about America. Because no other country has came through with such false ideas of luxurious living like America. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and uh, get that next verse. Bob Kasha. Okay. It says, I, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, mm -hmm. that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. <clears throat> yeah, so we as so-called Black, Hispanic, Native, American, man, woman, and child. It has to be all of us, not just the man, not just the woman, or just children. It has to be man, woman, and child as a whole, as a whole collective unit. We got to come out of America. We have to leave these philosophies behind. We have to leave the ideologies of that peace and liberty and love and all that. We got to throw it back in the trash can where it belongs because that's all America is, a big ass trash can. They give you the facade. They give you the illusions. Look, me and Mahar and a couple other brothers, we from New York, right? Everybody loved going to New York. Oh my God, nice lights. Hey, you ever seen what damn uh, Jerome Ave look like? You ever been a damn uh, 183rd? You ever seen what 145th in Harlem look like? Straight gutters, but nobody will go to those parts. Nobody will go to the parts where it's destroyed, disgusting. Oh, they just want to see the fancy, light, nice lights. Oh, Times Square, Central Park, Rockefeller Center. Wow, all that. But go and take go go to damn uh, Corona Queens real quick, and see how people look over there. So that is what this place does. It has a facade. They put on this beautiful, beautiful facade to try to cover up the ugliness that they, you know, that they really are. And guess what? America's like that ugly chick with mad makeup on. And guess what? The makeup is coming off. A lot of rain been pouring and the makeup has been coming off. But people just don't want to see it. Uh... Hey, Yashua, you got me on uh, that uh, Matthew 3 and 2? Con, yeah, I got it. Con. This uh, Matthew 3 and 2. And saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of the of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Yeah, you see that? So we have to repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And if you're a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American, you have to repent. You have to come back to these law, statutes, and commandments that are in the Bible that your Christian pastor is not going to read to you. You have to come back to your culture and heritage that America is not going to teach you. You have to understand who your God is, worship your God, and recognize that your God is a true living power, not a fake false deity who's been dead for I don't know how long, whose name is Sibo the Homo. 
you as a so-called black hispanic and native you got to come back to realizing that you are the child of israel you come from the man literally it's not no oh yeah we're spiritual no you are literally the physical bloodline descendants of that man named israel so you got to do what guess what his god told him to do and that's follow his ways and with that i'm your brother shalak and my time is up Hey, all praise to the most high. Khan, all praise to the most high. Call all your how by Shema Makishyaki Awashai. We say Shalom to the 12 tribes of Israel. Paz solamente para los 12 tribus de Israel. Arrepiéntese y regresa a tu cultura. Shalom.